Sure. Jeffers, thank you very much for talking with me. It, it's nice to um, talk to a man. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, it's better to have both the sides of the story, maybe to get a good perspective of what it's all about. Right. Well, the reason that we uh, know each other is because you've been transcribing the interviews for my book about climate, young women, activists who are trying to save our world from destruction. But before we talk about that, why don't we learn a little bit about you? You're a recent university graduate. You live in Nairobi. Tell us a little bit about yes. your background. Uh, I, I just grew uh, in the outskirts of Nairobi, actually in a village somewhere in the mountains. Uh, that's near the Mount Kenya. That's where I grew up. Uh, that's where I was born, that's where I went to school. So coming to Nairobi is just the, I'm part of the urbanization that is coming from the rural areas to seek either employment uh, in uh, in urban areas. And uh, that's why I found myself here. And uh, since then I've settled because this is where mainly, for example, for my country, where there is uh, job opportunities. This is where everything is central. So that's, that's why everyone is just... Uh, uh, central to Nairobi. Uh huh. And yes. when you were growing up, how many brothers and sisters in your family? Uh, I'm born into a family of three. I have two sisters. Uh, I'm uh, the second born. Uh, my sister, there's an older sister and a younger sister. And so what, I'm in between the two. Your middle child. What What yes. was What were the schools like there? I mean, my sense of rural schools in Tanzania, where I've been, and probably Kenya, the same as 60 kids in a classroom. Um, teacher may come or not, not a lot of equipment, maybe not even a library. What, what were the schools like? Yeah. When I, when I, uh, I was fortunate enough to have parents who were kind of, they were well up in terms of uh, the kind of society that we were in. My mom was a teacher and uh, my dad was a civil servant. So I, we, I was kind of in, a, let's say, in a better place in terms of either access to uh, education, because I went to a boarding school, I think, I won, I won, I was in uh, grade four. So it really, but there's a part of my life that I had to stay within the local schools within our community. And uh, the classes, you'd say, maybe, for example, if this grade one, you have like three or four streams, whereby you have like uh, 30, 40 uh, kids within one particular class. So there's only one teacher for just everything, and uh, you know that can be a bit overwhelming. For example, for a teacher, wait, so they will wait, go either for a break. Wait, one teacher yeah. for how many students in grade one? Close to around 40, 50, depending on the year of admission of maybe some other factors. Yes. So you find maybe a teacher will be overwhelmed. Maybe there was mathematics in the morning. They will be overwhelmed. Maybe at a break time at 10 a.m. Uh, they opt to either take a break and ask you guys to, you know, uh, uh, do something on yourself. So it's all just kids in a class, there's just no one, just don't make noise. That's all. Because that will be something that will be seemed uh, maybe a bit, um, it will look bad on them that they are not in class and people are making uh, noise. And because the school was a bit kind of, uh, uh, it was not spaced out. So there was a lot of, uh, you know, if one class is making noise, definitely they are, it will affect the next one. Right. Yeah. Yes. And was that true for middle school and high school in the public schools? Yeah. Yes, yes. It it's actually goes through all the way even to uh, some of our public universities are even worse, where you find they are close to around uh, 200 uh, students in, in one class, especially for some of the courses or maybe subjects, maybe or some of the careers that maybe most of the university students, because the, 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 the way the, the education system is in Kenya is once you clear high school, the government has a selecting criteria of how now you get to university. So through that criteria, you they, they can take even like uh, uh, 200 students because they have a cut line in terms of uh, a particular subjects in terms, I believe it's the same case uh, uh, in, in your place, whereby you have a particular cut line for particular uh, uh, careers. So you find that there are around 200, 300, 150 uh, 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 students within one uh, lecture rooms, which uh, in a way can be overwhelming. So it goes from uh, 
primary, uh, high school, and to uh, 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 university. And this is actually uh, brought about by now what we are referring to as the free education program that the government rolled in. So you find uh, in primary now the people who are accessing education are more. In high school, the people who are accessing the education. So the probability of these people being so meaningful, the infrastructure is still the same. The expansion is very minimal. And the leadership just says that, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's uh, free education, free education, but, you know, uh, the resources that these children are going to use, uh, it's, it's up in arms, but <laughs> it's anyone's guess, so to say. Because uh, you find maybe when it was first announced, there were so many students, because it was now illegal if you don't take your child to, to school. So you find maybe a parent bringing their children to school and, uh, you know, uh, they just want to oblige with what the government is just saying. They are not just they are committed to understand the quality of education that they either the child is going to 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 to, to either to learn. So there were so many. They, some teachers were overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, do you have to pass exams to get into high school and middle school? Yes, yes. So there's um the, the, the various schools. The, we have boarding schools whereby they have their own set of uh, you know. Uh, exam, but there is one universal exam that the government sets for either for grade eight, and then there is one for high school that is uh, what we refer to as form four. So the the, the cut line for grade eight will just push you now to uh, high school, and depending on the grade that you got, the same criteria of selection will determine which high school you'll go. Although you'll have selected maybe what that's not where you probably go. Then when you get to uh, high school. There is also the uh, exam at uh, the end of the four years where you do the exam and then based on the grade that you get, it will determine whether you proceed on to the uh, a government sponsored program in uh, university or uh, that will be the end of it for you or you will pursue private uh, 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 education what through the same universities also. What happens to children in grade eight who don't do well on the exam? Uh, the, the, the current rate is a push for a hundred percent. What we refer to was a hundred percent push for everyone who does the KCSC or KCP, sorry, the grade eight exam to go to high school, regardless of the mark they obtained. They, they are even um, county schools. They are uh, district and divisional and, uh, you know, local schools, there are day schools around that they can be fixed at least to access that education regardless of the grade that uh, they attend. So that is now. But when I was growing up, um, either due for one reason, either finance, financial reason or um, maybe there is an issue within the family unit that the children cannot go on to with, with education. That was it for most of the kids. They would just end up in the streets or uh, they just go into early employment or uh, something in that train. That something that will just they, they will not something that will make them not run in jail in as per se. Do yes. you know roughly what percent of children are in high school of high school age children? Uh, currently, I would say as of now, the last figures I think I saw for the, the, the 2018, 2019, I think they were around uh, 77, 77, I think, and 79 percent of the the, the, the the kids who moved from primary to uh, uh, high school. Because the, the primary was around, I think, 94. So there is usually that tussle of where does the remainder of those kids go? Some uh, absorbed, there are so many cultural issues that comes up, especially when uh, someone finishes up uh, uh, their grade eight. Uh, some families, they are not opt for the idea of uh, continuing because it's a lot of money. Others, their family rangos, uh, there is early marriage that is uh, really creeping our girls uh, in our communities nowadays. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it, it can be one uh, reason or another, but the government actually, as I understand, is trying to address that particular issue to make sure that if you finish your primary, you shouldn't go to high school, regardless of using that free program, uh, regardless of the quality of that education. Well, you said that it's expensive to go to high school, but there are, there's no tuition fees. Do kids have to pay for their books and uniforms? Uh, how it is right now, uh, back then, uh, maybe like, let's say, let, let me not even say back then, like three years back, three or four, five years back, you were footing the 100% bill. The parents were supposed to foot, to foot the, and so that's what I, I believe mostly cost the, 
the, the, the high dropout in terms of the kids who were transitioning to uh, high school from primary. But now there is a percentage that the government is giving to parents in particular. Uh, it gives to the school uh, uh, for a particular, uh, uh, for every uh, semester, uh, as I can say. For every trimester, there is a particular uh, subsidy that the government is giving. So that kind of now subsidizes what the parents who are doing and they can have some ease in terms of how the money, you know, they use to, 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 to make the, 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 the school payments. But uh, as it is, uh, you know, resources such as books is still an issue because uh, even when this program was rolled, it was rolled as a campaign, uh, I would say, promise. So there was no, like, uh, articulate... Uh, uh, understanding of what will it inquire, uh, require sorry, to have, let's say, 40 kids, and then now you have almost 150 kids within the same premise that uh, was uh, accumulating or accommodating that. So there was retro, I think, uh, uh, consideration that was put to that, which is a bit now bringing friction. The teachers' unions are complaining that uh, we are not giving the quality that we uh, deserve to. Plus also they are being told that now there is no addition of teachers because of the wage bill. There are so many things that were not put into consideration when all this was uh, being promised as per se as a campaign too. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Since there's fees involved, sometimes parents think, well, I'm going to send my boys because they'll be around to take care of me when, my old, when I'm old, whereas my girl's going to go to another family. So is it fair to say that more boys went on to high school than girls. Yes, I, th that is very true, especially for my generation. That is very true. Most of the uh, the, the boys, especially there, there are particular communities that this issue is very rooted into of uh, where the boy child is supposed to, you know, go to school and the girl is just married off as immediately as they turn uh, the, the, the puberty age uh, somewhere around that area. So you find that they value the boy more than the girl. And uh, within the last couple of years, the government has really cracked down on the parents and the communities in particular. Uh, there's a lot of sensitization that is going on into this. These are the same communities that were doing the FGM was very rampant in those particular uh, uh, communities. So you find there is a... There is the issue of uh, them having that mentality that the girl is supposed to either be at home helping the mom, and when they get to a particular uh, age, uh, a man shows up with uh, 20, 30 cows and goats, and they say, this is the one I want, and uh, I've been hiring her for some time. The, the, the dad will be able to take the cows, because in those communities, the more animals you have, the more wealthier, per se, you are considered to by the society. So it's, uh, and, and, and also there's the perception of, I want to marry my daughter to a very famous person, for example, in the community. So you find someone has like five, six, seven wives, and they are all people who are like at that age. So it's, it's, it was very weird, uh, as you can say. But the boys, you know, it's in the morning, pick a stick, go and, uh, you know, look for the, look at the cows and, uh, and the goats. And uh, you come in the evening, the food is prepared. So for you, it's getting into the heart and, you know, uh, it's bliss uh, for the following day, the same. So the struggle for the ladies, I believe, even in those particular communities, is very different with, compared to how the boys are raised. And uh, if you get a boy, it is praised more than if you get a girl because it's considered now raising a girl is, a, is, is a, like a, something that maybe is a challenge or uh, something that is not viewed in some ways as, a, you know, uh, something enviable. I would say. Right. Um, so yeah. roughly what percentage of college students are female now? Because there's a uh, Right now, I think, it, it, I think now it's even. The, 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 the crash uh, that graduated, it was, I think, around 50, 50, 53 to around 46, thereabouts. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the high school that the, the, the high school graduation actually was way better for the ladies. I think last year and last year, but one, they did better than the guys, which now shows that uh, once these all programs comes now, uh, when everything starts to streamline, which now you have more girls in high school uh, accessing to, uh, the education, you have uh, less, because uh, you find that in those particular uh, communities that were treating girls in that manner, 
people, some NGOs and churches, they could uh, put their resources together, uh, build, for example, a dormitory for maybe like 300 uh, kids, and they say it's just girls only. So you find in those particular communities now that you are having this particular problem, it is now being addressed by what now the churches and the NGOs are bringing in so that now the girls can have that at least ample time without, I'm going home to fetch firewood, I'm going home to fetch uh, water, is now education for three months, then I break for one week and then I come back again. So it's quality, I, I believe that uh, the, the, the girls have gotten more quality, uh, um, uh, uh, maybe attention than it was before, which does now transition to how they are performing even uh, in, uh, in, in in KCC because KCC that's usually the main, uh, let's say, measure of how, for example, you are going to fare uh, moving on further in our society. So you find maybe it's around, uh, it was around 53, 46, 47, there about. So you find there, they, you have overtaken the boys and the boys, they are only riding on the, I think the, 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 the idea of uh, you guys are now uh, the king of uh, the society, so it's for you to take. Hmm. Yeah. So roughly yeah. what percent of university students are female? I would say it's, uh, it's, it's uh, I would say it's around 55-50. Uh, because uh, being in, 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 in college or being in university myself, I could see most of the lectures is only the balancing is in some subjects. Right now, the sciences, the mathematics uh, subjects, they are mainly guys. But you find in these other uh, subjects uh, that what we refer to as humanity subjects, uh, that is uh, the, the, the other subjects that are not entire in terms of the hard uh, science, you find there's 90% of uh, uh, ladies. So there's that balancing in terms of you go to engineering, you find there are so many guys, and on this other side, you find there uh, uh, ladies. So it's, it's, it's there about, but uh, that number is going to change in the next maybe, let's say, two, three years as we move forward. It's going to change. The guys, the, the girls will be able to overtake the guys in terms of how many girls are accessing education, how many guys are, how girls are going to university. That number is going to change very soon. Mm -hmm. um, you yeah. mentioned that your community has an impact on what educational path you'll take. So as I understand it, community is like a code word for tribal background is that right yes. <laughs> so yeah. if if i'm a kikuyu yeah. if i'm if i'm a kikuyu yeah. then i and my children have better opportunities than if i'm not kikuyu yeah there's uh the i'll break it maybe into uh, in the two the one community for example for us is the the gen, gen y and z that we use in terms so that we feel we are more inclusive as per se uh for you like the, how it is for you in terms of the genders for example uh, uh the, the 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 pronouns uh in in, in in the in the west so for us is mainly community is just inclusivity because right now there's a lot of um inter-community uh, marriage, these uh, interactions, people working in different areas than they were born in. So in, instead of you now going into the inner great details of where were you born, what is your second name, you know, we, you refer to us as just one. And that's why the word community may be apprised in terms of which is your tribe, instead of using the word tribe, which kind of, in Kenya, the word tribe is kind of... Um, it it it's uh, it has these bad notions in terms of where we have come from the the crashes uh, the animosity that was there before so you, you kind of tend of to stay away from that particular word for either good reasons or bad reasons or maybe whatever someone may may feel but, but what, uh, I, I, I would is, say uh, yes it, isn't yes, it don't? true that most of the the high-ranking politicians are like Kikuyu in their background, so that there are there's still these stratifications. Yes, that that is very true. They, 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 when 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 the when we gained independence, there was one tribe that was mainly in leadership. So you you can say along the lines there were maybe what you can say the the, the level of nepotism and. Uh, the, the level of uh, tribalism was so rampant that in some ministries, like let's say 10 years back, you can find like in a particular ministry, a government ministry, that there is almost 70% one community. 
70% is occupying almost all the senior positions and now the juniors and the other positions are taken up now by the other communities. And even those other communities based on who do you know. And uh, it, it's something that we have really, as a society, as a country, we have really tried to address. And it's still not addressed as, as it is right now because you find most of these communities, like uh, let's say the Kikuyus uh, uh, as per se, and maybe the Kalenjins in particular, they benefited so much from the government resources at that particular time that catching up to them, there is still that gap in terms of how do you even have an access? Because there are still cartels that are controlling the particular sectors. There is still, uh, you know, corruption that is so rampant. So even if you are from a minor community and uh, 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 you want to access some services and someone from a major community who has resources, who has money, they can bribe their way to that particular uh, and you miss out on, on the opportunity. So the issue of uh, some tribes being dominant is so rampant, yes, that's true. But it's an issue as um, the young generation, although they are trying to, you know, uh, deviate from it, it's still there. You, we can't say it's, it's not there because the opportunities are so scarce that you end up going back now to that. Because that's now the precursor of all this. You, you you want to go and get away from it, but now the the, 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 the lessons that you learn uh, when you get into the job market, you find that you can't get a job without knowing someone from your tribe. You can't get a job, a good job, without uh, either uh, giving someone something, you know. And all these things, even if you want to fight that stereotype that I don't want to discriminate you because of your community, you still go back to them because you have a need that you need to address, which is now a job opportunity, and the resources are very scarce. So there's, there's that tussle in terms of the balancing of which side of the herd you want to be uh, as per se. Hmm. It, it's yeah. kind of like yeah. the caste system in India or color yes. system in the States. So yes. um, our, I think the only difference is like in tribes and castes, you can tell someone's background by their last name, right? But in, yes. in the States, yes. you can't tell someone's color from their last name. So it makes yes. it a little bit... Yes more equal. Yeah, that, that's actually, that, yeah, that's how it is here. Yeah, there, there, there is some pride in terms of uh, where you come from, but also you don't want that to be used as a tool either to discriminate you or to discriminate someone. So for especially for the generation Z and Y, you find there are youths who are trying really not to, if you ask them what's your name and they will just tell you the English name. And if you ask, maybe the other, uh, for example, uh, we were joking with a few friends of mine that uh, if you ask me for my second name, then you have some motive to once, why do you want my second name? I just want to, uh, I'm James, I'm Jeffa, that's it. So if you want to know uh, which other particular name maybe I affiliate with, then it tells that there's another motive that you have <laughs> than asking for my name. Mm -hmm. yes. So do you, yeah. do you, pre do you predict that it will change as your generation gets in power because your generation is more interested in equal opportunity? What? How, how long do you think it will take before there's equal access? Uh, I would say it, it, there is, uh, what, what I would say is that there are deep roots in terms of uh, the people who are holding power currently and uh, that will have uh, I say in one way or another, even if the youth or the generation, our generation just want to have all things changed in terms you don't see someone by where they are coming from, but just as a fellow Kenyan, this will uh, take some time. I have no, t maybe a timeline of when this will be, but uh, following what happened in 2007 when we had our crashes, most of the people who are used to are the youth in those areas that were affected. They were youths, uh, people less than 35 years. So you, you find there is uh, either lack of uh, understanding in terms of you as a youth knowing that whatever you are doing is wrong for the other person and also uh, trying to figure out that how do I make sure that we get away from this monster that we have always been fighting since independence. So there is there's that tussle. That's why I don't have like a timeline of when I believe this is going, but 
the, the way I see my interactions with my friends, colleagues, I, I see there's a, a good trend. But also there are instances where you find someone saying now that is a kikuyu, that is a kale, that is a, a lawyer, and then you 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 know you think about it and you're like, why did you have to go there? We we are kind of not you don't want to affiliate people again to that. So it's, it's a bit. Although people are making jokes in terms of your tribal, you do this, you do that. You know there are those tribal jokes that are you know people find them funny, but they have some kind of. Uh, you know, there, there's something attached to it as to why someone saying something to you. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. When, when you went to university, oh no, I, w I wanted to ask you, are there other African countries that you look to that have been more progressive? I mean, I think of like Rwanda after the genocide did a lot to get women have equal opportunity yes. partly because so many men were killed but are there countries that you look to say oh they're really progressive they're really making equality work yes yes uh one that was i would pick straight forward is uh, rwanda rwanda has uh, made progress yes they have a dark past that they are, they are they are coming from but it is from that dark past that they see the essence of for example women in leadership because they think they have the highest number even I think around the world they have I think one of the highest numbers yeah, in terms do. of the women industry. Yes. Yeah. So, so it's it's very. Uh, imp I would think of. Uh, I've looked at other West West Africa countries, maybe a country like. Um, uh, I've looked at uh, what is it called? Uh, Senegal uh, is a country that I have had has kind of. Uh, uh, the, the women leadership, which you know, transit to so many things happening that were not happening when these other patriarchal kind of leadership was happening. Uh, I think they are taking their strides, and uh, you know, the others are catching up. I would think maybe uh, Angola, although there are still issues with the you know, right now the, the military and all that, they were on the right track. Mm. Uh, maybe uh, those, those I think are the ones that I can pick in terms of their models of uh, 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 leadership that, they, that they're having. What about uh, South Africa? Because they, that South Africa did so much work with reconciliation after apartheid and trying to make equal opportunity for everyone, but I, I it's been very difficult. Yes, so the reason why actually uh, South Africa was in my mind, but the reason why I didn't pick South Africa is there are a lot of retrogressive things that are happening after their 1994 when uh, they attained independence. They are, I've been watching the news, and to them, it's more of uh, we want the white man out, as they would call it. And, uh, you know, it's it, it's kind of putting out a message that you are not this accepting person that, uh, you know, who says, yes, you did this and this to me, but, you know, I'll just uh, let that to go and we build a new country together. But what... I'm seeing either from the opposition, the government is being accused right, right and center of corruption, you know, and uh, the, 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 the government, if you look at their parliament in particular, when the session is so disorganized in terms of who takes what, and there is also the speaker, I think the deputy speaker and the, maybe the speaker of the other house, I can't remember his name, uh, th there were reports, you know, in their press that they were put there as the face of women, but... Uh, in essence, there are some of the people who are the most oppressing people in the regime uh, that, uh, you know, uh, was uh, really uh, making the South Africans themselves. So they are not there for the gain of the people. They are there just for some political kingpin to be able to fulfill that there is a face of a woman present. But they answer to someone else who is, uh, you know, uh, not maybe of their gen, I would say. Yes. Yeah, so they're puppets. Um, wh yeah. What what did you study in university? And um, I know that it's been a struggle to find a job after graduation. Yeah, uh, I did uh, study information technology. That's uh, what I went to do in uh, campus. Uh, it, 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 it's hard to, 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 to get uh, a job, for example, if you're lucky, there are jobs there, but if you're lucky uh, to get a job in your own line that you studied for, then that's, uh, you, you are lucky. But uh, that is far in between for you to, to be able to, so you take what you get. 
So there's a lot of uh, career adaptability. That's, <laughs> that's, that's how we call it, where you adapt to whatever brings something on the table. So it's, there's that uh, that uh, we are doing right now. So uh, what, what kind of career adaptability have you found after graduating? Uh, I, I've, I've mainly, my, 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 I went to, there's a company I worked for that was for internet, it was a ISP, the internet service provider. Then I moved from there, then I went now to media. So currently I'm in media, that's uh, uh, where I am. Though there's some IT, but you know, media is just, you know, uh, the, the, the just uh, for, for us, we are just doing for a company that has an app for the people. It's a local, it's an app that is actually based for local programming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. How many languages do you speak? I do three. Three, three languages. I do four languages, uh, and mainly that is uh, English, uh, Swahili, uh, we have Meru, we have uh, and uh, Kikui. Mm -hmm. So is, your, back are local and then, uh, is yeah. your is your background Kikuyu? May I ask? No, no I'm Meru, but oh. uh, we are all put in one basket because we are neighbors. And uh, you know, uh, the way the voting has always been done is like we are called the Gema people, which is Kikuyu. Now the local pro the, the local direct producer is Kikuyu, not Kikuyu with a K, is a with a G. So it's Gikuyu, Kamba, and Meru. So now as Meru is called Gemma. So we are put in one basket as this is a basket from the Gemma community. Uh -huh. So even when you try to explain to someone that you are from Meru, ah, they say, ah, you are from Gemma. And it's, it, it's now someone like you is someone I can explain now I'm from Meru. That will understand, ah, this is from Meru and not uh, from Kikuyu. But the people here, they are like, are ah, you, your Gemma? And that's it. It's, it's done. <laughs> Oh my! <laughs> yeah. Um, one of the things that you've been uh, doing for a living is uh, transcribing for the climate book. I and you, you've read yes. I don't know how many. You've read a lot of these interviews from <laughs> young women yes. from around the world. So I'm wondering if you have seen patterns. What what has what's your thinking about who these girls are and why they're able to be so young, so verbal? Uh, I, I, it, it's, that is, whew, that is, uh, it's a very wide, because those guys, uh, the, the girls, each and every girl that I, you know, I transcribe, they have their own personality and how they arrived to where they are in terms of, the, the, everyone has their own story in terms of how they arrived, how where they are, in terms of uh, addressing either the climate crisis, either internationally or within their, uh, or within their, their, their community. So I would say it's, um, it, it's, it's, very, it's, very, it's very interesting uh, to think about it, because you can't put all of them in a spectrum, but you can tell that through all these crises that we are all experiencing, because each and every part, regardless of which corner of this uh, planet that you are in, if there is a problem in one corner, trust, or you are on the other corner, you'll be able to experience the effects of the same. And that is, you know, unless someone is blind to not to see that uh, uh, if the ice is being affected by someone using chemicals in their farm somewhere and someone uh, is experience, is not getting rain because there is you know uh, this effect on this other side so it's i would say it is through that understanding and currently the the generation is well informed the current generation is well informed because when you listen to those ladies you can't fail to understand that these are ladies who have taken their time to understand what exactly is it they're talking about because you find uh, like uh, maybe it's a, it's a either from Sasha from Russia with all the you know the 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 the, 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 the hardship that the government is putting them uh, uh, through uh, in terms of uh, you know those are uh, uh, hardships. Uh, it's it, it's uh, you you go to Brazil and you like you can even lose your mind uh, when you think of uh, Bolsonaro. I believe that's the name of uh, yes. the, the president over there. And, and 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 you come to now the uh, the Americas where you look at someone like uh, you know uh, Trump and you like these ladies are experiencing what exactly 
is the direct opposite of where we should be based on the timeline that we have been given by the experts who say we have less than a decade to, you know, turn around this thing. So I believe the generation is the one that is going to bear the biggest brunt, and I believe that's why they're taking this mantle in terms of how do we turn around this thing without getting into the finish line and we are like, what do we do now from, uh, uh, how, what do we do from here uh, uh, and moving forward? And, you know, it is their generation and the generation to come because these are the parents tomorrow. And, you know, if you think about your children, how much you care about them and how tomorrow they will be affected by the things you see today, I believe that's um, part of the drive that these uh, girls have. And, and also, as I, I listened to them, there was also the aspect of, you know, uh, most of them were mentioning the word nurture in terms of, you know, women are perceived to be uh, nurtures, uh, you know, the nurturing, the caring part of, uh, you know, uh, uh, life. And I believe, although I don't want to, you know, like put it in terms of that is the, the number one factor as to why there are so many women in climate uh, change uh, advocating for climate change. Uh, sorry, I, I don't think being a woman is the key factor here, but I believe it is part of what really drives these women to be able to have that uh, drive in terms of, I want to, because I've seen it in my community. Girls are more, uh, I would say, outspoken. The girls will not just keep silent with their problem. They will just, you know, I'll get someone to talk to. And the guys here, the, the guys here, especially the, even the suicide rates in Kenya, they are just skyrocketing, and guys are the number one uh, people who are being affected by this. And it's through not sharing what exactly is, you know, uh, affecting you inside, I would say. So you're saying that the guys have mental health problems because they keep it all inside? There's serious mental health issues here, uh, is particularly for the guys. Ah. There's a lot of, uh, and you can see it in terms of the social interactions. That is through massive drinking, uh, drug abuse. It's mainly the guys who are into this. Because if it's not going to drive you to suicide, for example, either you end up with a drunkard or a waste. Uh, you end up either taking a lot of drugs, which is now what is taking root. And it's starting right from campus. You can clearly see it that... Someone, something is going on with this particular person and, you know, they get, uh, you know, the, the next thing you know is they are drunk and uh, it's Monday to Monday that uh, that's, it's happening, actually. What, what, kind, what are the drugs of choice? What, what are the most common drugs? Uh, I'm, I'm a victim. Actually, there's a, there's a particular uh, chewing cut that comes from where I come from in, uh, in Meru. It's called Mira. It's a cut. Uh, it's a stimulant, I would say. It's like coca, maybe somewhere in Nepal or something like that. It's, it's more or less the, 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 the same. So the, that is so rampant among the youngsters, even as old as uh, nine years old, uh, they are chewing it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really a big problem. There's that. There's also now the marijuana, although here it's illegal uh, for, 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 for that. Uh, or, but it's everywhere. If you want it, you can get it regardless of whether it's illegal. And now there's now what we'll find the cheap liquor. There are these uh, spirit liquors. It's not the local brew, but these are, you know, the methanol kind of, you know, uh, spirits that are being produced by, you know, and scoopers, uh, uh, dealers around. And, uh, you know, as long as it gets you high, you take it. That's the mantra that these guys are, are, are using, which is very bad in terms of how much it affects your health, especially the liver, kidneys, and all that. And, you know, the social impact of that, not even your body as per se, but that is key, but also the social impact of how when you drink, how does it affect your life and the life of the people? Uh, uh, around you, yeah. Do you think that the the drug use and alcohol is because the, the, you don't have opportunity? I mean, you can go to university, but you may not get a job. So there's that puts a lot of pressure on, especially since the tradition is men should be the breadwinners. Do do you think that's why there's an increase? I will confirm to you that's actually part of the major in, uh, problem that we are having. Uh, you find once you graduate uh, from, especially, in, I'll, I'll use an example of my community. For example, if you graduate, 
you expected to get a job and there's uh, you know the, the society is partly to blame for this because uh, <clears throat> i grew up in a society whereby if you scored well for example in your kcp or you if you are exam entry exam either for high school or the the, the, the one for living a, a primary if you scored well in those classes everyone else who didn't score in particularly uh, good grades as per se there is that kind of uh, you know um, pressure that is put on these other kids that I didn't perform as much as so and so, and but I'm expecting to be able to be so and so. And then there are these uh, models within the society, the people who have uh, made it. Maybe they graduated from university, they became a doctor, an engineer. Uh, you know, they have a good career. So there is what I will refer to as. Um, they are but they are poster careers in Kenya. I would say, like, and what I mean by that is, uh, there is a, a, a particular trend among parents in particular that I want you to be a doctor. I want you to be an engineer. I want you to be, you know, those big, big, uh, as you would call them, uh, careers. And then you uh, wonder where will all these other people uh, 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 go to. So if someone is passionate, for example, about a hat, about music, uh, most of the communities that we grew up to, they don't know how to nurture that and to be able to capture that, to be able to make sure that this uh, child knows how to use that talent and make a living out of it. So most of them, you find that uh, the students, when they get to campus, is when they are like, oh, I can sing, how I can act. So you find these, these kind of, uh, you know, um, lack of awareness, self-awareness that they find it very late on in life that, you don't know what to do with it. The doors that you're going to open, you are told you need this, this, and this. So you are like, I started as a, an IT engineer, but I find that I'm very okay with the uh, acting or art, but I'm being told to produce some documentation in terms of art. So where did I miss the line of, you know, getting into an arts class? So there is all that frustration, and then, you know, the economy is not opening up to absorb all these people. You know, and uh, speaking to some of these graduates, you, you really see it in their eyes that my I was the uh, like the breadwinner. For example, my family was so dependent on my education. Once they put, they sold all their cows, they, they sold all the you know part of their land to be able to pay, put me through school. And you know, it dawns on them that I have graduated, but I don't know where I'll get a job from. So part of that is also playing a a, a, a role in terms of some of these uh, uh, the youths, uh, drugs, and all that that they're engaging in. Which you know, it's it's a lot. For example, if someone is raised by you know a single mom <clears throat> within their society, and you know they have four or three, five other siblings behind them, they were the firstborn, for example. You don't know you finished school and then when you graduate, you get a job and then you can support your, you know, your mom, you are done with university, there's no job coming, you've tried your best, you have the best grade. So it's such kind of uh, uh, situations, I believe, are contributing to that. And also there is also now the social constructs within the urban areas, uh, in particular uh, in Nairobi, and these other big towns within the country, they are also a contributing factor because right now the government is trying to tell parents kindly understand your children kindly uh, you know uh, uh, know what your children are into so that you understand them from where they're coming from and if there are issues you address them as they are young not when they are they, you know they in campus or they are after graduation that when you realize oh my child is a drunkard oh my child is a you know takes drugs and, and all that or you pay more attention. But I see that now with the current generation of uh, either Generation Y and some of the Generation Z, the parents who are there, you find that they are paying more attention in terms of what does my child want to do for themselves, not what I have told them. Because mm -hmm. as for me, I was given options when I was growing up. Some of my uncles were telling me, ah, that course you have chose, you would not get a job in this country. So if, if, for them, they had graduated. And if someone like that tells you, and you know, if someone has lived in Nairobi and you have, all you, the life that you've known is in the rural village, and they come home and they tell you, ah, you can't get an opportunity with that career. So there is that discouragement. 
So it pushes people to particular careers, and now you can't meet the target, the, 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 the category or the marks for the particular uh, career. So there's all these frustrations that are really, uh, uh, you know, encompassing these youths that uh, you, you can't put your finger around one. There are, there are like so many, but that is actually the, the main one, actually. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. In, in the States and other countries in the West, people are talking about teenagers have increasing anxiety and depression. And I wonder if people yeah. are talking about that in Kenya. And more so, the girls are likely to be anxious and depressed. Do, is there that kind of conversation going on? Yes, I have, uh, I, have uh, I think, uh, five... Uh, five cousins of mine. They are between the ages of I think of around twelve to around nineteen years. They are about. So I've I've seen the level of anxiety that they are going through. Because right now they're in high school. You know that's when you know teenagers and all that. And they, 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 there's a lot of trying to fit in. I would say there's a lot of I want to fit in. I want to fit in. And you find that. Uh, if the parent, for example, is not uh, in a position either to provide you, for example, with a smartphone, which is the, like the in thing among the teenagers, uh, if uh, your parent is not in a position to either buy you particular clothes that are within the trend at that particular time, uh, if you find your parents, for example, they are, you know, when people go out either on uh, over the weekends, you just indoors, you know, chores Monday to Monday, you know, there is that kind of, I, I saw it with one of my cousins that they were affected because the other cousins, uh, you know, for them, the life is, you know, fast lane and they could be able to, you know, do most of the things that for her, it was just staying indoors, uh, either in the farm or maybe in the house helping out. And it really affected her self-esteem. Even when you're having family gatherings, you couldn't see that, she is not at par. Although they are same age, but they are not at the same in terms of what you would say. The interaction is not the same. So she went on to high school after primary. She went, she went on to high school. And it really became a problem when she went to high school because she didn't want to come home. When we have gatherings, she didn't want to come in. So you can tell that until she was talked to uh, and she was taken to a counselor when one of my aunties noticed there is something wrong, that's when now the issue was addressed and she came out and said what exactly she has been holding on for all this time. And even her mom was, sh uh, was shocked to, to learn that this has been happening. I have not noticed. But, you know, you can't blame them because, you know, traditionally the girl, according to them, how they were raised is supposed to, you know, if you're not in school, you're at home and you're supposed to be helping your mom. And, you know, part of that is... And, and also now there's a lot of... Um, uh, femicide, what I would say, femicide in terms of um, uh, the cases that are being reported within the, the country and especially the urban uh, cases of femicide are, very, are, are so much uh, uh, high, as especially 2019-2020. Is that so in terms uh, of babies or domestic violence of spouses and daughters? Yes, domestic violence, that's the main key, not even the, the, the babies. Domestic violence, especially for these young couples, as you can say, because you can see if someone is married at the age of uh, 20 uh, and maybe they get into an argument either with their partner, uh, as per se, you find that most women are suffering in such situations. And also uh, girls are getting now more into drugs, which is kind of, uh, off because this is the area that many of the guys who are doing drugs are, 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 are men. So you find there are so many ladies that are coming and going to, um, they, they are drinking more than uh, the usual. You find them, they are drunk, they don't even recognize themselves. So you find that these are part of the, you know, the, 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 the cubes that are, you know, connecting into all these uh, uh, issue of depression, anxiety, there's the expectation, uh, will I get someone, you know, there, there are all these things that are, 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 are playing into all this. And I think girls, the, the number for girls is a bit higher than for, for, for guys in terms of either anxiety, depression, and suicide. But that is also now playing a part in terms of which part of the country you are in, because urban is very different from the, you know, the rural areas. The rural areas, you know, is uh, the, the, the societal, I would say, perceptions are even more 
uh, uh, serious than they are within the, the town because the town people they are more you know uh, I would say liberal I would say they, they are more uh, their mindset is better than someone who is actually in the rural areas so in the rural areas there is a report end of rape cases they are very high there there is uh, you know FGM cases so the a good case I'll give you an example of uh, some a place called Baringo there is um the, the community is very, those communities that they don't believe that a lady should even see the door of a classroom so the the the, the, the FGM is very rampant in that particular area so you find that if a girl for example wants there is one particular girl who met uh, one of the missionaries, the people who come to, you know, uh, for the church, uh, uh, for the churches over there, I think a Catholic church, uh, they talked to this girl and the girl was enlightened in terms of what you can do for your community because you couldn't see what, you couldn't see what uh, was happening. So she came and told the mom what exactly uh, the, 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 I think it was a father for the church and mentioned to her. And the mother told the dad, and the dad, the first thought that he thought is, you, where are you going? Where did you go? Who did you talk to? And all that. And it became a big problem that the, the dad wanted to marry off the girl even before she, she got to uh, the age where even they are married off traditionally, which was so sad. And when the case was enlightened, you know, there is the legal process. Uh, and, uh, you know, before that can be addressed, there are all these, if you see that case and then you are told there is a whole community that lives with this particular stigma, then it's a big problem for the girls. Mm. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. it's Ill, uh, female genital mutilation is illegal, right? But it happens a yes. lot. Yes, yes, yes. It is illegal, and uh, funny enough, is it is illegal. But you know, the the the, the implement or the, maybe the people who are supposed to make sure that it doesn't happen, uh, it will go back to the same thing that the society will not view a girl who is not circumcised as a woman. And you know, even if you put it as illegal, there there are so many other factors to consider when you put it as illegal. You need to educate these people what this. Uh, a process does to uh, a, a lady what uh, uh, the either uh, you know medical implications of doing whatever you're doing just because you went through it doesn't mean that a seven year old or eight year old has to go through the same and you know and the communities and men men were the target of this particular campaign in particular for those uh, 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 the NGOs and the churches that were doing this mission because it is through men that you'll be able to under, make them understand, yes, I can marry someone who is, has not gone through FGM and they'll still be the same, uh, you know, uh, uh, wife uh, that I will always want to have a wife. And that was the biggest problem. But now it's being addressed, although there are cases where you can hear, uh, especially when COVID started, there were so many cases of uh, FGM in some of those areas because now the people who are advocating for this uh, uh, things they left after COVID was uh, uh, the the curfews were you know they left so now the message no one had the message or no one had the to take care of these girls who are going back to these particular societies yeah mm. so yeah. I have a picture that living in a rural area a girl has to spend a lot of time fetching water um, looking for firewood uh, making sure the goats are safe. So is that an old fashioned view or just, is it still true in rural areas that the kids can't go to school because they're doing all that kind of farm work? Uh, it, the, the, the thing about, uh, you know, um, the, the, the society how it is, it is changing, but there are communities that are still holding to those uh, particular traditions. And uh, f for my community in particular, that uh, th there are no such cases as per se in terms of uh, what what there is now is th there is the mentality that I want to be a woman who is a nurture. And the word nurturing, for example, and uh, you know the perception of who a woman is in our society is someone who takes care of their their, their home. And by taking care of their home, you have to know how to cook, you have to know how to take care of your husband, you have to, you know, 
all those things uh, combined together. So if in, in my community you find that there is a lot of enlightenment in terms of knowing that your partner can also help in terms of, you know, uh, if it's a, a chores around the house, they, they can do this, you can do this. So there is kind of that uh, know-how and it, it has been brought maybe, I would say, the last couple of years, not maybe 10, 15 years, that's when you see now, there's kind of that adaptation in terms of I need to help you in the kitchen, I need to help you uh, uh, in the farm, and it has been brought after people, after the urbanization, and then now people going back into the society and, uh, you know, uh, saying that this is so backward that you don't have to, uh, uh, you're the one bearing the, 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 all the burden of doing all the chores within the house and all I do is just sit around and, you know, eat and sleep. So there's, there's that, but there are communities that are really uh, into some extremes in terms of doing that, of how they nurture a woman. Because every community has their own way of how they go about, you know, uh, uh, who is a woman and what is a woman supposed to do, either around the house and either within the community uh, and so on. Yeah, some communities have a tradition of plural marriage, and I wonder, in your observation, does it make it easier for the plural wives because they can help each other, or is it hard on the, the women to be in a polygamous marriage? Uh, I've seen the, the, the polygamous marriage, because what actually happens, I will say, there is the aspect of I will help you around because of the chores, but uh, there's also the aspect of now the children. Because you find in most of these polygamous families, they have more than seven, eight, ten kids that each and every wife has. So in terms of the, the, the chores, they will actually either double or if not uh, triple in terms of what exactly you are doing uh, uh, in that particular household. But I would say... The, the, the issue of polygamy is actually now left with a particular sector of communities. And people are knowing now the burden of, you know, it all comes down to resources. How much resources do you have to sustain uh, the, 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 this particular uh, or these particular women that you want to, to bring under you? So for, for the pastoral communities, uh, they're the ones who are, are left with that particular kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, practice. Because to them, well, these cows. And if you have like 200 cows, you're considered wealth. So, and the women there perceive these men as very wealthy. So if I go there, you will not have any problem. But the minute you walk in there, the first thing you will have will be confronted with maybe at the age of 12 when you get married is, because that's what I've been taught, uh, been put into your head that this is a good husband. They will take care of you. They'll do blah, 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 blah for you. But the minute you walk in there, you are met with, particular obstacles, going to fetch water, uh, you know, back-breaking chores around the house that you're not used as a 12-year-old or maybe 14, 15 years old. So some of these things are some of the uh, factors that, yes, it is okay, you will be an helper to the other woman, but the other factors that apply to you being comfortable, being in a, you know, a good marriage, that is, and all that, you will not be able to enjoy all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think of the Messiah... Yeah as being that, that kind of a pastoral tribe yes. with those traditions. Yes. Yeah. They're really, yes. Yes. they're beautiful yes. people. They're, they're something so elegant. <laughs> yes. and so. Are we even wearing one of the, the Ashukas? What we refer to as one of the Ashukas? <laughs> ah, it, we, I, we can, I can't really see it. Can you hold it up? Oh, so, 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 yeah, this one. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's great. Um, in terms of the yes. it, the environmental movement um, in Kenya, what um, are people aware? Is is there are young people on board, or is it just a small group of people who are concerned about the wildlife and about drought and agricultural practices that are organic and that kind of thing? Uh, the, the the current uh, the, the climate movement in Kenya, I can say it's it, it's actually is bridging all the gaps in terms of the in terms in terms of age. Because uh, I'm a, I'm I'm part of one of uh, a, what we refer to as uh, there's a national park next to our uh, our city called the Nairobi uh, National Park. So I'm 
I'm friends of Nairobi National Park. Sorry, that is uh, one of uh, you know uh, the initiative that was started a, a couple of uh, you know years ago when people wanted to know uh, there was an SGR that is a standard gauge railway. There's a railway that wanted to you know be constructed through the park, which was um, you know the eco damage that was being done was so massive that people had to take action. The people who you know understand that having a park next to the city is something that you know should be able to be valued. So people came together through uh, the, either Facebook or Twitter and, you know, they became, they just created a group that we really need to put a campaign to make sure that these people don't, you know, go ahead with the kind of construction uh, they, that, that they want to do. So, the, and when we went for the meeting, there were... The, we met in a park, first of all, before we went for the walk, and you can tell by the look of the people who are there, they are youngsters. Yes, in terms of the leadership of uh, some of the organizations that came in, because they are they're either the civil servants and uh, some of the NGOs, the environmental NGOs that are around, they have some senior people. Maybe those are the people you can see as senior, but the rest of the uh, people maybe that you can see there were youngsters, children, you know, they, they tag along their parents and, you know, it is part of them nurturing and understanding that nature is something that we need to, you know, uh, conserve and, uh, and be part of for, for forever. And it's, it, it's, it, it's, it's uh, I would say there is awareness now when it comes now to the local uh, or the other uh, uh, populace. You can tell there is awareness because right now the, there is what we call the uh, Nairobi... Uh, there's some transformation the government or the Ministry of Environment is doing in terms of the there's a river called Nairobi River which has been polluted for I don't know uh, it's it's not even a river anymore it's it's called like a sewer drainage uh, it's not even a river so there are plans and they have started actually to you know uh, reclaim part of uh, either the riparian land around the you know the river banks and uh, you know make sure that it is habitable for people you know even if it's a sitting setup uh, is a recreation area you know there are all those plans that the current ministry or the current I would say administration because after every five years someone is put there and they have their own ideas and they scrub off whatever was there and you know they just do their own thing so it's it's right now there's something good that is happening and we are hoping at least in terms of either uh, some of the bans that have been done in terms of deforestation, uh, some of the communities that are living in uh, water tower areas, they are being moved uh, to avoid further encroaching into the forest and the youth engagement in terms of all these activities is very big. It's very big because they are using the youth in terms of those activities that they are doing, which I believe in a way is uh, contributing to them understanding why it is that they are, they, they, are, they, are, they are performing their activity and how the importance of that that they are doing to either not only the surrounding but also to the environment in, in, in general, as per se, because the, the pollution around the city was uh, crazy. It was very crazy. There's a mountain called Mount Kenya. You will not see it uh, along a particular uh, road, but I think COVID is part of, uh, you know, has helped us so much in terms yeah. of uh, the, putting down the, the, the pollution also. Yeah. When, when I was in Tanzania, people disposed of plastic by burning it. There, there wasn't a developed yes. um, recycling system. Is, is what, what happens to all the water bottles, single-use plastics in Nairobi? No, uh, for, for, for Kenya in 2018, they banned any kind of uh, plastic bags. There, were, there, there, there was a complete ban, and uh, now either you either find or you put in jail if you found either distributing or using and such kind of things. Although, you know, uh, the damage that was done before this ban came in, uh, was so massive that I don't know how long it will take because the ban yes, is still there, but the effects of those plastic bags uh, still lives on, I would say, because like the Nairobi River is actually is a paper river. That's how uh, that's what it is. There are so many papers in that river that you, in some areas you cannot even see water running. 
So it's uh, it, it's 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 pretty bad, but we believe now the ban has brought the 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 the, 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 paper, the use of the papers down. Uh, even it was affecting even the pastoral communities because now you know when there is weed and the paper the, the weed picks up the papers it hangs in trees. Uh, you know, and uh, you know, it goes into bushes, and this was being ingested by some of these livestock that you know uh, the, the community is keeping. So there is a lot of things that there is a lot of positivity in terms of uh, positive things in terms of uh, what the ban did, but we have a long way in terms of addressing uh, the aftermath of what that dumping of those papers did uh, over that long period of time. And uh, there is also now the other effort of plastic bottles in terms of uh, the recycling. There are youth-led in, youth uh, initiatives in terms of uh, plastics, where they collect plastics uh, and, uh, you know, they use them to recycle either in uh, doing, uh, maybe uh, making uh, the flip-flops that, uh, you know, uh, guys use. Uh, they use them either to uh, redo the bottles again for, for water and the, there are talks I have heard about burning now the plastic bottles also. Whereby, um, because it, it's really not making sense when, yes, the, you want to use the bottles, but the, the, the level of menace, because the single-use plastic bottles, bottles in Nairobi is very much, very much. And they are, you know, they are cheap. They are like, uh, what you refer to, you know, maybe like 10 cents. Uh, and maybe if someone can take, for example, five of them within a day, and uh, you can imagine now the, you know, the, the whole ripple effect that has if there is a popular still doing the same. Uh, and uh, the, the other thing that I've seen is um, maybe to add on to that is the lack of self. Um, how, how do I put it? Uh, the, the the lack of self discipline in terms of. The, my actions, how do they, for example, affect, uh, uh, you know, the environment or how do they affect, uh, or what I would refer to, lack of account, self-accountability. That's that's how I would put it. In terms of you yourself knowing that my actions will lead to something bad happening to uh, to something else. There's that A lot of that is actually part of what the problem we are dealing with right now because there are recycling areas where you can take your water bottle and put it in that particular bin, but you know someone will be like, ah, I'll just throw it uh, anywhere I wish to, which uh, is which is very bad, I'll say. Mm. Um, yeah. What is the yeah. government doing for renewable energy development? Solar, wind, water power. Uh, we have we have a couple of uh, 2012, 2011, 2012. I think that's when. The, the government started to put in motion in terms of some of the renewable because the energy consumption in Kenya has always been mainly hydro. That's that's the has been the way of uh, you know uh, electricity. But I think around let's say 2008 to 2012 there were improvements either of geothermal uh, that they added into the grid because there is a lot of geo uh, 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 ge 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 geothermal. Uh, production within some parts, central parts of the country. And then there was uh, now the weed, the, the weed mills now. The, there's uh, the weed power in, the, the, I think the country, the Japan, I think they're the ones who provided that for us, I think in uh, 2000 and around, between 2010 and 2012, they're about, I can't remember the exact time. But Japan now came in and, you know, there's a lot of uh, areas that uh, you can say, we can harvest the weed power in our country. So there is weed power. I believe it contributes around 2.5, 2.3 percent of you know uh, the, the, the 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 power grid that we have. Uh, and also uh, there is now companies. Now we have these uh, industrial parks that are being uh, built. Uh, not the old companies, but the new companies that are coming up. They are kind of eco-friendly. I have seen a couple whereby the the roof. In particular, is pure solar, and which you know, if uh, that transit in terms of the power that they are using, then you can tell that it it's really helping in terms of that. And also, uh, there is one of the projects that the government is trying to implement is something called the there's a Konza city. There's a city that is being built that is uh, you know eco-friendly. I would I would say 
whereby uh, wait, what did they I don't call? Know how can you put it? But what, it's called Konza. Konza. How do you spell it? K O N Z A. Konza City. Konza. And what does that mean? I mean, is it a Swahili word? Konza. Yeah, it's a Kamba. It's a local dialect uh, word, but it's used to, uh, you know, uh, like, like uh, I can't remember the exact uh, where they got the name from, but it's uh, one of the local communities of where they, that uh, facility is being built in. But it, it's it's very eco-friendly in terms of how the mapping of how you see how things are going to, you know, uh, to, to, to be able to be uh, to, to be put. And it's actually up and uh, running, I think, they are around 20-30%, uh, I think, in terms of uh, uh, how far they have gone. And it really reflects what you'd wish uh, each and every city, maybe either not within or even internationally, uh, really models. But, you know, with our country, you have to wait and see some of these things, you know, uh, how the government implements them, because... It is one thing, good, very good on paper. We have very nice, uh, you know, uh, 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 formulation in terms of what is written on paper. But the implementation part of it is a bit uh, sketchy. So, so, uh, so it's a very good model. The Kansa villages, they're yes. not industrial parks. They're like cities where you have homes and shops and that kind of thing. But they're, they're green. They, they have solar and wind and bike paths and that kind of yes. thing. Yes, 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 yes. Have yes. you been to see one? That's how it is. Have you? Uh, right now, it, it's, it's, not it's not accessible to the public. I believe the last time I saw it, but it's quite a distance from Nairobi where it's actually uh, uh, situated. So even the drive there or the transportation there is not that, uh, you know, uh, uh, but you can tell from when you see the news because they bring the updates in terms of what is being done uh, in the news. So you can update uh, yourself in terms of how far they are in terms of, you know, that kind of interaction. And uh, it's only actually last week that they were giving an update. And in terms of how it is modeled, I don't know uh, it's, it, 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 if that's what is going to be at the end of it all, it will be very nice. It will be very nice, yes. Could, could you send me a link, ideally yes. with yes. photographs, uh, and I'll include it in the, yes. the YouTube, because that's, that's exciting. Sure. I, was yes, in I was in Seattle, in Washington, and I visited yes. the Bullet Building, and everything was ecological. The toilets were turned into fertilizer for plants. There was, wow. there was everything they generated more energy than they used in this one building it was it was such an exciting model so i'm i'm really interested in models like that yes yes this one i'll, I'll send it to you. i'll send it to you even the pictures of how they have always marketed it i'll send it to you and then now there are multinationals that are coming in you know they are buying into the idea and you know they are part of what is you know coming up yes um, the Chinese are spending a lot of money in Africa to build um, infrastructure, roads and trains and whatever. And I wonder if they're yes. looked on as the good guys or the bad guys. I mean, is their influence... What's the kind right, of... Right now, uh, right now, the Chinese are the bad people. They are the bad guys. <laughs> right, now, right now, the vibe, the vibe that I, I hear the Chinese... Uh, there's no the word good is not being associated with the the Chinese. Yes, the government and you know the people who are benefiting from uh, either the direct beneficiaries of these contracts, either in terms of providing the materials and uh, you know the people who are in you know in business with these people. They are the people who actually who are celebrating. But in terms of what they are doing either for economy right now and in future, the amount of debt they are putting the governments in because uh, you don't understand whether is it lack of uh, having the know-how of knowing that you're being given a loan that you're going to pay 10 times what the market value is mm. or is it that uh, you know you are in business with these people that you want also to defraud your own people this particular money so these all these uh, anger among kenyans yes the, we have uh, one of the, they call it the flagship in terms of the railway that is being uh, built between the two uh, cities, the Mombasa port and, uh, you know, the capital. But 
you know, there are people also who raise the concerns in terms of uh, the expenses that were used, the destruction these people did in terms of, you know, because it cuts along one of the biggest uh, national parks, the Savo National Park. There is also, um, you know, the Nairobi National Park that, you know, now they're extending the same railway to. And, uh, you know, it's like they have no regard of... Uh, what's in their way and it's either their way or the government they use the government facilities to come after you so even one of um, there's a lady uh, i can't remember her name uh, who was really fighting for the elephants i think i'll i'll i'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll you know i'll uh, forward you her, her name she's a very big conser conservationist uh, here in in kenya uh, she was really fighting for you know this uh, corridor not to you know to 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 to, to go and you know the government machinery, the you know the, the the bureaucracy that is there. You know, even if you take the case into courts, and the courts are the same people who are supposed to be the judge, the jury, and you know, it, there will be no justice. So they, uh, they they lost the case, but I believe that whatever she portrayed in terms of what she wanted to be able to, has to know what was being done because. If it was not for her, I believe there would be more much destruction in terms of what happened, in terms of when that uh, corridor was being built. So th th these are people who have no regard of whether this is something you treasure, whether this is something you value, uh, whether it's something you want to preserve. Th they have no regard of that. If it stands in their way, it is subject to me not either going around it or uh, doing something uh, that be able to preserve that. It's dis total destruction. And this comes now in on top of the debts that we have uh, and the government is, which now is affecting uh, you know the, uh, the, the 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 youths because now you are supposed to use these resources to employ these youths and create opportunities. Now there are no opportunities because you are indebted to these people for close to twenty years. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it the youth are getting hungry because they see the person we put in power to be able to protect us and be able to provide opportunities for us uh, is still selling us to the highest bidder and uh, that is really. Uh, uh, very uh, causing a lot of anger among the the, the, the populace that we have here. Yes. Mm. Yeah. I I heard a yeah. news story that the Chinese ha have in their mind. They have these kind of abstract formulas. So they're tearing down rural homes and building high rise yes. in the countryside, and the farmers don't have a place in the high rise to store their chickens or their farm implements or it's away from the fields but they don't they don't think they just think oh we want to get rid of yes. the old and build the new and we don't care what happens in the process yes that, that's a, that's actually a very case example that happened in uh, western part of, uh, of of kenya whereby you know the 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 the, the, the location where they wanted to uh, build something there was a old lady who used to live there. So they went through, you know, th these people are not doing these things without the, the, the support of the local people here. So they come, they, you know, the corruption is something that people want to get easy money. Uh, you know, they just go into a, an administrative office. They target someone who is uh, the person responsible in terms of either signing off a paper uh, signing, uh, uh, maybe uh, pushing on some papers, they target that particular person and that person is presented with very crazy money they have never seen. And they will just snap and sell you like uh, the morning sunshine. So it's, 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 it's very bad because these people are using our own people to be able to defraud us and do, to implement these particular things because they will not get a permit without going through the local government. And the local government, we are the ones who are there. The people representing these, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 we are put there to be able to represent uh, the values of this particular community. But when someone comes in with a load of cash, we are like, hey, uh, I need the money. Uh, let, the, let them find another way of, you know, uh, doing their things. So you find there are those cases. Uh, and there are instances when people are standing up for that kind of bullying, because I am calling it bullying, because it's... There's no way you can come and change my whole way of life without either consulting me or asking me how do I want to change this and this and this. So uh, there's a lot of bullying that is uh, going on and 
people are standing up in some instances they are being addressed in other instances uh, you know the government is saying uh, you know the government uh, infrastructure has to go on and you know such kind of uh, I would say uh, thoughts being put into a community is very bad because how do you tell me now that I was doing a now I not be I was farming from this and this is where I was getting my food from but now you won't tell me that you want to convert this into some yard of uh, stones that you want to be put in here because it's convenient for you to pick them from this particular place. So it is very bad in terms of the, 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 the kind of notion that I have is anger towards the Chinese myself even. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I was in Tibet once and one of the first things I saw was a man with his hands bound behind his back being carried off in a pickup truck and they said, oh yes, the Chinese are going to hang him you know, he did, maybe he showed someone a picture of the Dalai Lama or something that's illegal. So it, it, was, it was very repressive. And they took the beautiful buildings and built these ugly cement structures. So um, yes. Yes. not a pretty picture. Um, my last question is, as I've talked yes. with African youth, I hear the theme, African solutions for African problems. So we don't want... Western or Chinese people coming and telling us, oh, you should do this, this, and this. So w what does it mean exactly? What are African solutions? <laughs> uh, it's, it's interesting you ask the, the question because a, a few weeks ago I, I had an interaction with a, a friend whereby we were trying to find um, a solution to uh, a software that we were, we, we were actually working on, or something that we were doing and required a software to be able to do. So the issue of African problems for African problems for African solutions, uh, I believe it's more of a political tool than it is for the things that needs to be addressed here. Because... I look at it like this. If you have something from the, the way I was saying earlier on in terms of the, the, the climate, if one side of the, this planet sneezes, definitely the other one will feel the effect. So it, it is in terms of the politics, and I believe when people feel that uh, the agenda they wanted to put across is not uh, you know, uh, bene beneficial to them, that's when now you kind of start hearing these things of our people. Uh, we are not going to be told by the white man to do A, B, C, D. We are not going to, we want to be able to do this. But how you are doing, you are not even providing a framework of how are you going to even address those particular issues, the African way that you say you are going to address it. So right here we can see through the lie that those people are, are putting. I think that was said during the African Union. I think that's when I had that, the first time I had that phrase of, African problems, uh, African solutions, and um, it 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 was really towards the the, the the issue that was happening in Libya. That's when it started, when there was chaos in Libya, Egypt, and you know the Western countries wanted to you know come in and be able to you know uh, provide a solution for the same. So I, I believe there is um, kind of an hypocrisy in some of our leaders in terms of how they are addressing this particular issue. Because we can't be, it, you will be ignorant not to accept any kind of help from someone who sees that you have a problem, but either you're taking longer to address the issue and you're having a problem. It's like getting sick, but you're saying, I want to use the herbal medicine here and not use the modern medicine. So it's, I would say it's very hypocritical for those people who say that, but there are some things that, you know, in terms of um, to, to, to maybe put it in more of a perspective that I see it in is the in terms of the culture preservations that we have as, uh, as Africa. Uh, there's a lot of westernization that is kind of happening. And uh, if we are not careful, for example, we may lose that uh, fabric of what we are as a society. Uh, for some of uh, the things that we practice, uh, the best practices, I would say, not some of the, uh, you know, uh, backward uh, uh, practices like FGM, early marriage, uh, and, and such. If we get the best of what we have as a society, as a community, 
we can preserve that and have that as a solution to some of uh, this particular case. Maybe I'll give maybe an example of, uh, you know, there is uh, what you refer to as uh, if uh, someone within the community has a problem, for example, how the community used to, you know, uh, come around that particular person and make sure that, you know, they, 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 are, they, they, they feel the warmth that is there, either they have lost someone, such kind of uh, practices, I believe they are worth keeping the traditions and not, you know, the kind of uh, westernization maybe that we are seeing, you just go to church, this, and it's done without either going through some of the practices, you know, those practices that if you lose someone, what you go through, you know, I, I believe it's being taken away in a way because people are giving reasons in terms of uh, uh, it's taking too much time. There will be so many resources spent on that particular, uh, uh, doing that particular thing. Uh, there's this and there's that. So I believe, you know, if we can maintain some of those, I think they, it will make it... Uh, more uh, a beautiful maybe place uh, that you can have the modern part and you know still have your traditions and uh, still uh, you know uh, I, I, I put it as the haka the New Zealand haka the you know is that rugby team that they normally play the haka dance is so traditional that you find even the people in the highest level of you know leadership they still want to you know get into it because for them is a celebration. Is that tradition they have emulated for quite uh, a long time? So that I don't see. But in terms of what you have asked of leadership or the African problems, uh, African require African solutions. It is a, a, a 50-50. I'll say someone is ignorant not to accept any kind of help if it is genuine help, and you can tell when there is genuine help. Uh, in the current uh, world, I believe there's no one who can just put you into a corner to accept something that you really don't want to, to, to accept. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking of Hillary Clinton popularized the idea, it takes a village to raise a child. Yes. So that's an example yes. of the tribal community that was supportive and people didn't yes. feel lonely or alienated. There was a sense of, I have this yeah. support. And, yes, yes. And social support, you know, they know... I think... Hello, yes, sorry? Um, social support is one of the qualities that makes people live longer. People who are lonely and yes. feel unsupported die sooner. So social support is important. Yes. We're primates, you know, we're, we're used to being yes. like monkeys and chimps in a, in a band of, that true. supports each other. <laughs> Yes, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. Um, so, it, 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 is there is, is yeah, there another uh, example of of some tradition that you would want to keep? I'm thinking of um, uh, where was he from? Oh, he he was from. Um, I'll I'll think of where he was from, but from East Africa, and he said. In the West, when someone dies, there's a funeral, and then it's over. Whereas in his country, if someone dies, there's days and days of getting together to eat and cry and mourn. So there's rituals yes. that help people deal with those kind of major transitions. It's not like just go to a funeral for an hour and then yes. we're done. Yes, even in our community right now, there's a, there's a particular community whereby they have like three days of, you know, coming into the homestead of the departed and, you know, they it is dancing, it is celebration, they are, they are practicing their rituals in terms of uh, what needs to be done. Uh, and, you know, with that kind of celebration, even when the people leave after the burial, the family is not left that uh, we didn't have people around either to console with us and, and all that. It, they feel a relief that this part, person was, you know, celebrated and, you know, part of, I think, the, the, the grief that they are going through is actually lifted off. Even in our society ourselves, although ours is kind of now the modernization that I'm referring to, is we, we kind of visit the family, but, you know, it is the, the local people who are there who visit now. Because in, in this other community that I'm referring to, the one in Western Kenya, people travel from over that they have to be there within those particular three days. 
but in as a community, you know, those, uh, you know, uh, visits once, you know, uh, either the church will be there for you. But you see, uh, the, the church, you know, it's there are so many churches. So if there's a practice or a culture and a tradition that you want to practice, it will cut across all the, 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 the churches that are there, which is something that should be able to be enjoyed by everyone, regardless of your, you know, religious uh, affiliations and, and all that. Uh, maybe we also have something, another example maybe I would give is the rest of passage for the boys, for example. There are communities that have, uh, you know, uh, uh, held the, the tradition of the rite of passage that is so ceremonial that they have to do some practices for either one month and, uh, you know, to keep such instead of, uh, and you know, maybe with also the... Uh, the westernization, as uh, I would call it, there is also, you know, most of the people in town, they are saying, I'm not going to take my kid into the village to go through all that, uh, you know, tradition that I went through when I was growing up. And it's a lot of money to traveling, a lot of uh, inconveniencing that is going on. And, you know, it's, you can't... Uh, it, it, it you know it's it's a personal decision but it's something if i was to choose for everyone i would say just can we maintain some of these uh, tradition the good ones as per se to say the the rite of passage for boys often involve circumcision is is that widespread still yes yes that is very widespread but there are various practices in terms of the process of how that is done uh, there are communities that, uh, you know, for them is just uh, as simple as a day's event. To others is as simple as not less than two weeks event with everyday celebration of what that uh, may entail in terms of uh, the particular community. But it's basically uh, the rite of passage in uh, the, the kind of setup we have is uh, circumcision, that is, yes. Um, and. Is, do girls who are, say, 13 go through the same rites of passage or not? Uh, for what actually is happening now for some of the communities, there are those communities that were, the communities that were engaged with FGM. Now, there is that notion of the FGM of the mind. Because you find now uh, these NGOs and the churches, they now want the right of passage as the boys because... What they realized, I believe, I had one of the counselors, I think I had uh, some times back, saying that if a boy is going through a rite of passage and they were in the same class, the same age group, the same age set with this particular girl, even the girl needs to go through the same process in a different way to be able to transition to the, say, the next level to uh, know that, uh, you know, uh, so and so, they are changing in this particular manner. This is how we also change with them. Uh, we are also being molded to be able to understand ourselves because that's the period that, uh, you know, uh, puberty, you know, is uh, uh, getting in and, and all that. So it, it, it is, there is now an understanding that it is just not the boys. It is also involving uh, the girls, but now in a more... Uh, uh, um, in a way that, you know, they can also understand why is this happening, what will it lead to later on in life, how is this affecting affect me now and maybe in future, and why is, does it even happen, for example, because we understand there is a lot of, uh, most of the kids when they are growing up in some of these uh, societies, especially in the rural areas, it is, you, you can't, they can't ask such questions that why does this and this happen? It is like unheard of. And they grow with low self-esteem of not either appreciating either themselves because they were not taught how to, or some of these things. And, you know, it, it, it is part of what you see now affecting uh, uh, the society in one way or another, that some decisions are being made that you find uh, either they believe that I was told I should marry uh, at this particular age, I should marry someone with the 20 cows. Uh, I should do this and this. And if they are not taken into that, outside that kind of thinking, then they will still subscribe to that regardless of whatever uh, uh, setup you put them into. Yes. Mm. Um, yeah. In traditional African culture, there was a lot of affinity with ancestors. Like you would give a little food or liquid to the ancestors before you yes. ate or call on them for guidance. Do you, is, is that still yes. a tradition that we feel connected to ancestors or has that changed? 
Uh, I would say that has changed in a, a big part, but I see it, my, my grandfather, my father, they still do practice it that before they take a cup of tea, uh, before they drink uh, maybe anything, they just, you know, pour something uh, to the ground for the, you say, for the ancestors to, to either bless them or, uh, you know, to, to provide for them or maybe they will say something. Uh, but in terms of the, the, the current generation, that is... Uh, I have not seen it in one of my friends, but I, I, myself, I have practiced it. I know it is practiced in my community, but <laughs> I, I, I have not. It's something you can't, some of the setups that you are in, vis-a-vis -vis maybe in the rural areas where you can just pour on the ground. Here, you know, you're in a hotel, you're in an office setup, you know, you can't just go pouring and they want to bless the, the, the ancestors, you know. You put it in a so cup. So it kind of erodes. <laughs> they can have their own cup. Yes. <laughs> We, I'm, I'm assuming <laughs> yeah. that you went through the coming of age ritual, and if so, what kind of values did they emphasize? Okay, you're becoming a man, you should be like this, this, and this. Uh, it, it's actually breaking into parts, but there's so much that, you know, growing up that you learn those kind of uh, set of virtues that you are taught up, they lack so much. But you understand because it is the, the time in which those kind of things were, you know, were, were being practiced and the, the, the kind of setup that uh, the environment, those things applied at that particular time. But right now, the, 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 are, the time has passed, the, passed them in terms of some of the practices that you are being taught there. Because you be told uh, the practices like, you know, how you should respect your mom, how you should uh, be able to, you know, have a conversation with your father. You know how you should be able to at least uh, 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 talk to your elders. Uh, how be able to you know if you meet someone of the opposite uh, sex, for example, what kind of interaction? How you should uh, interact with them? What is respectful? What is not respectful in terms of the, the the community? What are some of the accepted practices that you should do as a man now that you expect them to be a, a warrior within the community? What are things that you are not, uh, what exactly is expected of you, either in terms of, you know, uh, the engagement. But, you know, that now, it's not uh, tied in with the kind of modernization that is happening now. So you find there is all that kind of tradition, but you find that, uh, uh, like when I was coming, when I was uh, go going through that rite of passage, your house is built outside your, the, the normal house because... Uh, you, you are given a new home, uh, I, I would say, uh, after the, the, the rituals are done. You're given a new home. So there are a whole set of rules that comes, you know, in terms of uh, the engagement there. And different communities have different uh, 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 maybe uh, yeah, rituals, yes, uh, in terms of uh, how you should carry yourself, how you should go about A, B, C, D. And how that now ties into the modernization that we have now. When you are told, for example, you shouldn't, for example, hug your mom. You shouldn't now interact your mom with your mom in this particular way. And now you come into this kind of uh, modernization where you feel, my mom is everything. I feel I can do everything for my mom. And, uh, you know, and, and here is a tradition that says you cannot hug them. You cannot, you know, do this and this with them. So you feel kind of, do I now subscribe to the same tradition or now do I go with what, for example, I, 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 I feel as a person because whatever the culture taught me, they taught me as a, as a society. But me as Jeffa, I have a personality that is just me. So it, it, it is like I'm trying to fit in now my, you know, my, my, my view to that particular kind of... So you find now you, you, when, when you come of age, you start to see some of these things don't make sense, but you understand where they came from in terms of the people who are, are telling, them, they're telling you these particular things. Uh, if you're told, for example, if you're walking, you should, uh, you know, when you greet your mom, you should go, you, you should pass them. If, for example, you're passing each other, you should pass them on the left side. You know, some of these things, when you try to think around them, you're like, uh, you know, it's uh, their past time. The time has passed for them. And, you know, you just accept them as some of the uh, the, the traditions that maybe they, 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 they really existed under. And, you know, when you're 
either food is being added into you to you to eat you know how to go about it so, so if you look now the modern now that's tradition now you come to the modern uh, set of living they did not apply because now when you come to urban towns where by the space to live you can't be given a different house somewhere to live in uh, because you want to still uh, let's say observe the traditions that uh, you subscribed to and uh, you know it involves a lot of resources to to do that so it's um it's it really hard to balance the two <laughs> it's really hard to, to balance the two because also i believe i i feel that uh we may not be uh, subscribing to so much of this tradition but if you went through that it's kind of um uh, i would say brainwashed you in kind of a way that you believe those kind of uh, beliefs regardless of how far high you go in terms of the social structure as, so to say you still be held back by some of those traditions that uh, you know you went through because you want to be in line with your tradition <laughs> i would say yes mm. yeah so it, it seems to me it's what you said that you want to keep the good and let go of the bad like female genital mutilation so but you, we don't want to get rid of all the tradition because that provides cohesion and mental health yes 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 um, yes that's is there true. anything else that you would like to add that comes to mind uh you know it's uh maybe i'll, I'll add something maybe listening to all the ladies that have transcribed and thanks to you for giving me this opportunity because I've learned so much from you know there are some things you usually take for granted and then you hear it from someone that this is something they are really you know living it day in day out and you're taken aback in a way that you feel uh, I think there are things that need to change and I believe even from what I've learned because where I come from is it's a very uh, uh we are in the highlands so the weather there is very fine uh we have been having conversation with a few friends of mine to have a tree planting drive because part of the problem we are experiencing especially with the place where i come from is uh there is a lot of um uh, what i would refer to as uh, the pharmaculture of there is a lot of chemicals that are being used because the area is so rich in agriculture that now most of the pharmaceuticals are finding the area so lucrative in terms of, you know, uh, 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 bringing their chemicals, their products as a test to see whether they work or whether they don't work and oh, all dear. that. This so is it's, fertilizers it's, it's, and pesticides. Yes, yes. There's a lot of pharmaculture that is, it is really destroying the area because you find that now uh, there is the use of now the natural manure from either the cows, the goats, and all that. And you find people don't use that no more. They say that it has no effect. And it has no effect because you've already poisoned the land, uh, the soil, uh, as per se. The pH levels of the, the, the soil is so high that uh, you, it's, in, some, in some instances, someone will... They will have to spray the soil so that they can go to plant something because to stabilize the pH of what they want to uh, the plant. So it's really becoming. And then the the, the 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 farms there they are very small. So you find someone has like a quarter of an acre and that's where they are doing all their farming and everything. And they are doing so much. They are overworking the soil as you would say around the year clock, uh, around the, the the clock throughout the year. And there is a lot of problems that will come up with that because it is only a matter of time before the land stops even giving you anything and you will all you do is like dosage you get a stronger dose you get a stronger dose and the pharmaceuticals will be there to provide it for you and that is really bringing a, a, a really big problem in that particular area and I, I was discussing with one of my friends that we really need to have a sensitization because even in my society right now, the cancer cases are so high that it is one of the uh, the, the, the areas where uh, the highest number of cancer cases within the country is reported. Because and, and then people are like, why is this happening? And you're like, it's because of the chemicals that you continue to use. And and, and they don't see the connection. So it's, it's, it's so hard in one way. Uh, you have 
uh, uh, these particular things happening and then you feel now when you get like this kind of information you feel like I just need to rush there and tell them you know what this and this and this you're doing is this but also I'm, I'm, as I mentioned that there's also lack of um, there's also this uh, the, I don't, don't care that is within the society that as long as I eat today tomorrow will provide for itself so there's that kind of mentality that is really a problem within the society and I believe is part of what we need to uproot uh, and, uh, you know, uh, make sure that everyone at least is in line because people know there's global... When I was growing up, even my grandma, even I used to tell me, uh, today when you see these bugs going this way, there'll be rain and, boah, like two minutes later or two hours later, there's rain because they could predict the seasons in terms of uh, uh, when that happened, if you see particular clouds, you tell, ah, today is going to be sunny, and that's how it's going to be, and even without the weather forecast, because there, there was little regard for the same, but right now, it's very hard for you to even see what the next month will be. The planting season now, it is moved from red fed now, they are doing it in terms of now, the piped water, which now is really affecting the soil pH and all that because if you put the water throughout the year on a particular piece of land definitely it will affect the biodiversity the bio I don't even know the name to use in terms of everything composition that is involved within that particular soil so it's it's, it's really a big problem that we see uh, I'm seeing myself in that particular regard and the commercialization commercialization of um, uh, trees in my area there is a T zone so there's a lot of uh, the factories there since when they were constructed they are using timber to make uh, 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 the, the energy to produce the energy the energy for the tea the uh, drying and it's really been a cash cow for most of the guys who want fast money you have some trees and someone comes in with three hundred dollars and you're like ah I'm taking this one so it is part of, and now there is also now the cutting down of the indigenous trees and planting now the fast growing eucalyptus trees, which are really draining the rivers out completely. Mm. And, and and it's really a problem that really needs to be, uh, and there's one of one of our, uh, our members, what you refer to as the Congress person, uh, we have our county assembly people here, uh, who is really focused in terms of addressing that particular issue within that area. That people should, there should be some limitation in terms of what people are doing. Even if it's your uh, uh, farm, how much can you be able to do that? Because uh, if I can give, a, uh, I don't know whether you have time, I give you a, like a small uh, story of something that happened when I was growing up. Uh, there was anger that uh, people used to even eat, uh, you know, the maize cobs, the maize before, or the corn, as you call it, before it uh, matures to a level where it's good for harvesting. People are eating it before even it gets to that point. Mm -hmm. There was so much anger, I think it was in 2000, 2000, 2000 there about. So there was so much anger that people now started coming up to the highlands, where we, because our area is granted as the highlands where there is food throughout the year, and they are coming from the, 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 the downstream areas. So you find the, the problem was they are coming to a place whereby we have not been sensitized to know that there is a problem downstream. And part of the problem downstream, we are the causes of that problem. So you find that their taps run dry. Why? Because uh, people are cutting trees right, left and center and planting these uh, South African eucalyptus that were coming that were taking like three years to, you know, to, to mature and someone can sell them and have fast money. And it, it really brought a lot of conflict. And the leaders, when they were following this, they were telling, go to the highlands, they will give you food. And it, it really brought a lot of conflicts among the community that, uh, you know, uh, you can see it can break into a civil war within, uh, like maybe uh, people start, you know, taking each other's life or something like that. And it's very serious. Because we have seen it happen in some areas where uh, people are killing each other uh, over cattle feed. That is just where the cows are going to graze. Someone is killing you so that their cows can come there and graze them. So it's part of the 
problem that we really need to address early enough before it gets to a point where by now someone has to go to that extreme to to, to do that like some parts of the country that that is happening uh, in, in our society also yeah mm. a lot yeah. to think about okay i'll let you get yes. on with your evening thank you thanks <laughs>